Hey guys, welcome back to this game development series where we are creating a 2D mobile game using Fretter and Flame Engine. In the last video, we added this tap detector mixin to our Dino game class, which allowed us to override the on tap down method and call jump method on Dino. And now we can tap anywhere on the screen to make the Dino jump. This is cool, but as there are no obstacles in this game world yet. There is no real reason for the dino to jump. So in this video, we'll be adding some enemy characters with animation. For this, first we will have to get some assets which we can use for creating enemy animations. And I found this really nice asset pack from itch.io called pixeladventure2.zip. If I quickly unzip it, you can see that it contains an enemy folder which contains a lot of different types of enemies. For this game, I'll be using only three of these. But feel free to add as many enemies as you want. So I'll copy Angry Pig, Bat, and Rhino folders from here, and we'll paste it in Assets slash Images folder of our project. Now let's delete this Pixel Adventure folder. If you open up any of the folders we just copied, you'll notice that each folder contains multiple images for different types of animations. As we'll only need a single animation for each enemy, I'll delete all the unwanted ones. Now let's go to PubSpec and add these folders to asset section so that we can start using them. And since we have added new assets, I'll have to rebuild the app. For now, I'll just stop and minimize the emulator. Okay, so just like Dino, to represent an enemy, we'll need a new class. For this, I'll first create a new file called enemy.dart, which will contain definition for the enemy class. An enemy will extend animation component. As Dino and Enemy class are pretty much similar, let's just copy all the code from Dino constructor into Enemy class. So name of this constructor will be Enemy, and we don't need these comments here. So let's remove them. For the Sprite Sheet class, I'll import Sprite Sheet dot Dart. Now just to make sure that our Enemy class works, I'll first try to display the Angry Pig. So image name will be Angry Pig slash followed by the actual image name. Next, we need the texture width and texture height. You can find these values in the image name itself. First value is texture width and second value is texture height. Next, we need number of columns and number of rows. This you can find out by either manually counting the number of sprites in the image or you can simply divide the total width of the image with the texture width. For angry pig, this is 16 and number of rows is 1. So this will give us the sprite sheet object. And next, from this sprite sheet, we'll create an animation. Since enemies have only one animation, we'll remove this hit animation. And we can even set the created animation directly as this dot animation. Also, since angry pick sprite sheet contains 6 sprites, the from and to values for this create animation will be 0 and 15. This completes the construction part of enemy class. Next, we need to implement the resize method. For this, I'll again copy the resize method from Dino class into enemy class. For size, we'll need to import the Dart UI library. Now, we have some of these constants that we defined in Dino.Dart in last video. So to be able to use them in enemy.Dart without having to import Dino.Dart, I'll move them to a new file called constants. We can use this file to define all the constant values that our game needs. And now I can simply import constants.dart in dino.dart and enemy.dart. Next we have this ymax which was needed in dino class because gravity affects dino's position and ymax helps in detecting if dino is on ground or not. But for enemy class we don't need that because enemies will not have any motion along y-axis. While resizing Dino, we had set its width and height with same value because Dino sprites are square in shape. And from the texture width and texture height values of each enemy, you can tell that this code will not work for them. But let's worry about that later. For now, let's just try to display this angry pig in game world. Next, we set the x distance equal to this dot width. This is okay for Dino because Dino will always be on left side of the screen. But for enemies, 
their initial position should be somewhere on the right side of the screen. So let's change this to size.width and to give players some time to see the enemy coming, let's spawn it a little beyond the width of screen by adding this.width. On the last line, we set the y distance of this animation component and to account for empty pixels in dino sprite, we had added this dino top and bottom spacing variable. But if you check the sprite sheets of all these enemies, you can see that there are hardly any spacing in them. And since bat is flying enemy, it is perfectly fine if it is floating in air. So we can safely remove this variable from these calculations. And this completes the resize method. Next, we need the update method so that we can move this enemy towards left. So I'll override update method for this class. And to move anything, we need to know its speed. So I'll define a data member of type double called speed with its initial value as 200. And now in update method, I'll just keep on subtracting speed times t from this dot x so that this component appears to be moving from right to left. And that's it. Let's build and run this app. Okay, now to see the enemy, I'll go to game.dart and after adding the dino to dino games component list, I'll create and add a new enemy. To see these changes, we'll have to do a hot restart. And as you can see, now we have an angry pig running towards the dino. This means the enemy class is working fine. But because the way we have written this code right now, that angry pig will keep on moving towards left even after it goes out of the screen. This is not good because your game loop will keep on processing that enemy even when it's practically doing nothing useful. You should always handle such cases and free up any entity that is not needed once it goes off screen. I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, we can just move the angry pig back to its initial position once it goes out of the screen. For this, let's go to the update method. In here, after updating the x coordinate of enemy, let's add an if check. This if condition will check if current x coordinate of enemy is less than negative of this dot width. This will make sure that enemy is completely outside the screen and inside this if block we can reset the x value of enemy. But to reset it we need to know the size of screen which we don't have in update method. We get size as an input to resize method. So to make it available in update we can store it as a class member. While quickly add a variable of type size and then we can initialize this variable in resize. And now I can simply copy and paste this line from resize into update. And if I save this now, you can see that angry pig appears again. And once it goes beyond left edge of the screen, it again reappears from right. Now all this is good, but right now we have hard coded the angry pig sprite sheet in enemy class. If you want, you can have one class per enemy, but that will quickly become difficult to manage if in future you decide to add new enemy types to your game. So to keep things simple, we'll only have a single enemy class. But to be able to create different types of enemies using this class, we can store some kind of a data structure which will hold all the input parameters like image name, texture width, etc. for each enemy type. That way, we can tell enemy class which type of enemy we want and it will internally get all the required data from that data structure. So first step to achieve this is to have enemy types. For this I'll create an enum called enemy type. This will contain three types, angry pig, bat and rhino. Then next I'll create an enemy data class. This will hold all the data needed for creating an enemy. So it will have members like image name, texture width, texture height number of columns and number of rows. Let's mark all of them final as none of them will change once initialized. Next, let's create a constructor for this class and I'll make all the inputs as required name parameters. Now that we have an enum for enemy type and a class to store input data for an enemy, we can create a map which will map each enemy type to its enemy data. And as this map will be required only for creating an object of enemy class, I'll create it inside enemy class as a static const map, which will map between enemy type and enemy data. 
I'll name this map as enemy details. So its first key will be enemy type dot angry pig and value corresponding to this key will be an object of enemy data. Let's add all the required parameters for this enemy data. And as this is a const map, constructor of enemy data will also have to be marked as const. Now I can just copy all the values for angry pig from enemy constructor below. And once that is done, let's just repeat the same steps for enemy type dot bat and enemy type dot rhino. Okay, so now I have completed this map with correct values for each enemy type. Next step is to change the constructor of enemy class. This constructor will now take an enemy type as input. So the very first thing that we will do in this constructor is we'll get the correct enemy data required for creating an enemy of given enemy type. This can be done by getting the value from enemy details map located at given enemy type. This will return the correct enemy data. After this, we can get all the required parameters for sprite sheet creation from enemy data. And in sprite sheet dot create animation, the two value will be enemy data dot number of columns minus one, because all the enemy sprite sheets contain only a single animation. Now let's take a look at the resizing issue that I pointed out at the beginning. To make sure that the scaling of enemy is done correctly, we'll need the original texture width and texture height in resize method. For this, I'll add two int members in enemy class called texture width and texture height. I'll initialize them with corresponding values from enemy data in the constructor. Now in the resize method, I'll first create a scale factor. This factor will be equal to size dot width by number of tiles along width. And then I'll divide this by texture width. Basically, this is the ratio of dino sprites width to texture width of current enemy. And once we have this value, we can multiply it by the original texture width and texture height, and store the result in this dot width and this dot height. This will essentially resize the enemy such that its width now matches dino sprites width. And now to see these changes, we'll first have to change the code we wrote in game.dart at the start of this video. Now this enemy constructor needs an enemy type. So I'll specify enemy type dot angry pig. And now if I build and run this game, you can see that the angry pig is correctly resized. And just to check that other enemies are also working correctly, I'll change this to enemy type dot bat and I'll hot restart the game. Now you can see that a bat has been created. Similarly, if I change this to enemy type dot rhino and do a hot restart, we get a rhino. So I guess we should end this video here, else it will become too lengthy to watch in one go. We still have to create an enemy spawner which will randomly generate an enemy from all the available enemy types. But we'll take a look at that in the next video. So if you like this one, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.